Good morning, everybody. It's good to see all of y'all here. And for those of you joining us online, we're glad to have you with us this morning. We have just a couple of announcements. If you'll look in your insert in the bulletin, um, we have started up our Wednesday night activities. We have um, small groups available for all ages. So we hope that you can come, um, come join us on Wednesday night. It's from six to seven. Um, we do ask everybody wears a mask when they're inside the building. Um, and we want you to mark your calendars. Our annual trunk or treat community event is coming up. We're going to have it on Halloween day. And our hope is that the weather permits us to be out here um, and have our normal setup down in this lower parking lot. And um, if it is terrain, then we'll do a drive through event kind of like we did um, last year. Um, so please just make plans to help us out with that. If you want to decorate um, a car or help donate some candy, just be um, getting that ready. And we do have um, a pamphlet out on the welcome table. We've got a golf tournament coming up to benefit Haywood Christian Ministries. It's on October 13th, and the registration deadline um, is the 8th. So if you want to be a part of that, um, you can grab a handout on your way out this morning. And the UMW are selling pecans again. So um, Miss Judy will be out here outside the office, as long as it's still not raining, um, to sell some pecans. If it is raining, she'll be just inside the door. So um, stop and get you some pecans. Um, now if you'll stand and join me in our call to worship. Today we gather around God's table from near and far. We are the people of God. Even though we have different customs, traditions, and opinions, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one in God's spirit through Jesus Christ. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. Now if you'll join us singing, My Hope is Built. Join me as we pray together our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. As forgiven and loved children of God, let us exchange the peace of Christ. To those worshiping with us online, peace of Christ be with you.
Our scripture for the morning is from Luke chapter 17, beginning with verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, today is the first day, the first Sunday in October. It's a day that is designated as Worldwide Communion Sunday. It's one of my favorite Sundays in the entire year. I love it so much because it is a reminder that through Jesus Christ, we are one with brothers and sisters from all around the world. Worldwide Communion was started in the year 1933 at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they started it at a time when the world needed to be reminded that we are all connected. It was one of the darkest years in the Great Depression. There was great um, struggle with the economy, not only here in the United States, but around the world. It was a time when Nazis were starting to gain mo momentum in Germany. And a lot seemed to be hopeless all around the world. It still kind of seems that way today, doesn't it? Worldwide communion was and is a time when we gather together around the Lord's table. And we remember that Christ gave himself up for each and every one of us. Whether we're celebrating here or we're celebrating somewhere else, we're all connected through our faith in Jesus Christ. Well, communion looks different in different places, whether you're celebrating with a loaf of bread or an individual cup. Some people use wine instead of juice. Some people use those little wafers that taste like paper. You know what I'm talking about? They're awful. <laughs> and you know, I used to laugh because there are those little uh, communion on the go kits, I call them, where it's like the little cup of juice with the tin foil on top, and then there's a wafer on top of that and another layer of tin foil. And I used to laugh and say, oh, I'll never use those things. They're so tacky. Well, I ate my words when the pandemic hit, and then it seemed like those things were flying off the shelf. It was almost like toilet paper. You couldn't find it anywhere for a while in there. I'm glad that we don't use those right now, that we found other ways to be safe in celebrating communion. But however we celebrate communion, it's a reminder of our faith. A reminder that Jesus Christ came into this world to love us and ultimately to sacrifice his own life for us. Communion started out as a shared meal. It started out with Jesus and his disciples in the upper room, and then even after Jesus had died and was resurrected, the early disciples, the early believers, would share in a meal together, and then they would partake in Holy Communion. And I love that communion started out as a meal. I think there's something so important and almost holy that happens when we share in a meal together. 
When you sit down with people around the dinner table and you put away your devices and you spend time actually talking to one another, God is present and in that moment. Powerful things happen around the dinner table. But a part of every meal that we share together is that someone has to do the serving. Now, you know, there are people in every family that do a majority of the cooking, and I know some of you who do and some of you that don't. But there's always some kind of serving involved in a meal where someone does the cooking, someone unpacks the to-go containers, someone sets that food out on the table for everyone else to enjoy. Even when we have covered dish meals at the church, everyone pitches in, makes their food, brings it in, and someone has to set it all out on the table Make sure that they're serving utensils and all the things that you need for that meal. I love sharing in meals together. And I know that there's always some kind of service that's involved in that meal. Throughout my lifetime, I've been blessed to enjoy some really nice meals I've been invited to go with church members to their country clubs, to nice restaurants. And let me tell you, like, that is just not my thing. I go into these places and there's these beautiful tables with linen tablecloths and someone pulls out my chair for me and I just stand there and I'm like, what? I'm not used to that kind of service. And then, you know, if you go really fancy and the the server comes and places a napkin on your lap, I just sit there like, uh, what do I do with this? And then there's all the forks and the knives and the cups and the, I don't know what they all go to. I'm not from the South. I didn't do like all the classes and all of that stuff. Some of you are rolling your eyes like we didn't do that either. <laughs> you pay, some, some people do enjoy that. And we pay a lot of money to, the, to go to those nice meals in the nice restaurants with the fancy tables, with the really good food. And part of the reason that you pay your good money to go to those places is so that you can be served, so that you can enjoy the experience of someone bringing you your food, offering you more to drink. That's a big part of going out to eat. And it would be really weird if you went to one of those places and you invited your server to have a seat and Here, you sit down, you rest, put up your feet, and I'll take my dirty dishes back to the kitchen for you. There's clear boundaries when you go to a restaurant. Well, I've been on the other side of that table, too. I, uh, to put myself through seminary, I, I waited tables at a Chili's, of all places, for two and a half years. And let me tell you, I smelt like burnt fajitas for about two and a half years. It was pretty gross. <laughs> but it did the job. It paid for my graduate degree, and I learned a lot working at that Chili's, a lot that still helps me today. I learned how to deal with the public, how to work in a fast-paced environment, how to think on my feet, how to multitask, and even how to deal with unreasonable expectations, because we don't have those in church, do we? (laughs) At least my staff is laughing at that. (laughs) There were times when I had gracious and kind and Um, Just wonderful people that would come and sit at my tables, and, and I enjoyed those times. But there were also many times that I had just horrible customers. People that would come in, and it was clear that they were on one side of the table, and I was on the other side. 
the church groups were the worst. There was this one group of people that would come in every Sunday evening. They had just come from Sunday night services, and they would come and sit, and they were the most demanding people that I have ever waited on in my life, other than my children. You could do nothing right for them. And my colleagues would complain every time they came in, and and they would say, oh, no, whose turn is it? We would take turns waiting on that table. Well, one week, I, I don't know if I was their waitress or not, but I was bringing food out to their table and, you know, getting them what they needed to go with their meal, extra to drink, some more ketchup, whatever. I was taking care of their needs. And I finally went out with a la one last thing, and I looked at them. I said, well, is there anything else that you need? And one of them looked at me with a smug smirk and said, well, we don't need anything else unless you want to bless our food for us. And I straightened my back, puffed up a little bit, and I said, I am actually in seminary. I'm going to be a pastor. Nothing would make me happier right now than to bless your food. And I prayed a beautiful prayer, Lord, bless these people and the food and those who have prepared it and served it. And when I said amen, they just looked at me with wide eyes. <laughs> Suddenly, they saw that I was not just their waitress. I was not a server, I was a human being, worthy in the sight of God. Jesus often used illustrations about mealtime, and he used them to get a point across to the people that were listening to him. He would teach about the kingdom of God and about our role in the kingdom of God. In Luke chapter 17, he talks about a master and a servant. About how when a servant came in from plowing the fields or tending the flocks, the master would not say, oh, hey, come on in, take off your shoes, take a load off, have something to eat and drink. That would have been totally unheard of in that time. Instead, when the servant came in from working all day, the expectation would be that he would then go and prepare meals, bring food and drink to his master. And only when the master's needs were taken care of would then the servant be able to sit down and eat themselves. It would have been totally out of the ordinary for the master to even express gratitude to their servant. I think that God in this story is inviting us to recognize who we are. That God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are reminding us of which side of the table we are on. I believe that God is the host at the table. And we, as God's people, are invited to be both participants in the meal, to be guests, but also to be servants. Through Holy Communion, we are invited to partake in this wonderful, mysterious communion and meal with God. And at the same time, we are called to serve. To go above and beyond just what is required of us. To not just do the bare minimum, but to do more. At the beginning of our scripture passage, the disciples asked Jesus a question. What must we do to get more faith 
actually, it was more kind of a request. They said, Jesus, give us more faith. And it seems to me that in response, Jesus is saying, you already have all the faith you need. What are you going to do with it? On Wednesday nights, our theme has been Christmas. And part of that was we decided we needed some more joy and festivity in our lives. But I'm also reminded that Christmas is not about the gifts and the celebrations. Christmas is ultimately about the incarnation, about God becoming one of us to show us how to live out our faith in our lives. And through our faith, through our relationship with Jesus Christ, we become God to the world. Not saying that we're God, but we become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So I wonder, how are we being the presence of Christ for other people? I've seen that happen in some powerful ways, especially over the past several weeks. I've heard stories of people stepping into moving water in order to push other people to safety. I've heard stories of neighbors walking through mud to check on each other. And I saw it last week when our youth and leaders went out to Crusoe and then they went out into the community to deliver meals. And I want you to hear about that straight from some of the people who were there. So I've asked Victor and Maddie to come and to share some of their experience with you. Can you guys come on up? Good morning, guys. Um, so we had the opportunity last Sunday to go deliver uh, meals and stuff to the people that were affected in Crusoe. Um, our group uh, went towards Mustang Alley, Hidden Valley, and up Dix Creek. And um, I don't like stepping out of my comfort zone, um, so that was kind of difficult for me. Um, as we drove there, Brooke was driving us there, and I, I was afraid because I didn't know what was going to happen or who I was going to encounter. Um, but when we got there, there was nobody there, so I was like, sweet, maybe nobody will come out and we'll just leave. Um, but somebody who kept, we kept hearing somebody, and then from across the road, two uh, ladies came out. And uh, they were migrant workers, and they came out, and we handed all their food, and they took all the food that we had because they had some kids and stuff, so... The first stop, we ran out of food, um, but I told them who we were, and we went back to church, and they needed some detergent and stuff to wash their clothes, because they were like, well, we work in the field every single day, and, you know, we need some detergent to wash our clothes with, so we went back and got some more meals, um, but we didn't have any detergent and stuff, so uh, Brooke ended up driving us to Family Dollar General or whatever, and uh, we bought some, took it back to them. And uh, the words that stood out to me was that she said, I didn't know you guys would actually return. So that kind of stuck with me. And they all spoke Spanish, so it's like not only was I uncomfortable, but then there was like, hey, here you go. Use your second language and speak to them and help them out. And, you know, I told them where they could find help and stuff. So I felt like I was sent there for a reason. And, you know, it was really nice and to just to be able to help, you know, uh, considering that I am a farmer also, and, you know, I deal with stuff like that all day long, and it was just nice to be put in a situation where I could use my other language to be able to reach out and help, and uh, just thank for the opportunity to be out there, so, but that's what stuck out to me the most was just getting out of my comfort zone and being comfortable at the same time when I was there, so.
Good morning, everyone. Last weekend, we went up to Crusoe and gave out warm meals. Our youth group went up to the Methodist Church up Crusoe. We drove to some homes and handed out almost 70 plates of food. Not did we only hand out food, my group handed out heaters. I didn't expect to hand out heaters. I was just going to hand out some food and just leave. Well, um, some, some of the other churches had donated heaters to the Methodist Church to give back out. And my group gave out two heaters to the sweetest man, to two of the sweetest men. They were so grateful, and their faces were the best part. Their faces just lit up when we gave them to them. And then we went to our last stop. <laughs> it was a bumpy road. <laughs> and not only did we expect, expect to see some pretty cool people, we, we saw some pretty cool animals. We didn't know that there was donkeys up there and that they were famous. But we saw some ducks and chickens and some other animals. And they were just walking around freely. And I thought that was pretty crazy. <laughs> but my favorite part was to see their faces when we handed them the food. I felt like my group had shown, like, I felt like God had shown through my youth group that day. I, I really, <laughs> sorry, we had really shown um, Jesus. But um, like, there again, um, like, their faces just lit up when we handed them the heaters and... <laughs> I'm going to say it, Jade was pretty funny, <laughs> and so there was this guy, we handed him the heaters, or we handed him the food, and we were like, is there anything else you need? And he was like, well, I'm kind of cold, um, and we are like, well, we have some heaters back at the church, and so we ran back to the church and grabbed some heaters, and so we gave it to him, Well, we knocked on the door, and we didn't hear him, and we are like, oh, well, so we knocked again, and so <laughs> we handed him the heaters. And he was like, sorry, I was, in the, I was in the tub. Well, we were walking away, and Jade said, dang, we should have brought him some uh, to bath bombs. <laughs> and so we all started laughing. And um, just us having a good time and um, handing out food, and it was just really fun. But thank you all. Y'all, I'm just so impressed with how our youth embody being the hands and feet of Christ, how they go above and beyond to serve God and to serve other people. Um, and I encourage us all to continue to do that, to embody being Jesus Christ to the world. Um, we're going to continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Uh, today for Worldwide Communion, we do take up a special offering for the Greater United Methodist Church um, to go towards missions and ministry, towards missions. And if everyone would give one dollar, it would make a huge difference in these people's lives. Um, so you can give online or you, if you're here, we have a box available for you, your offering today. Let us continue to give with grateful hearts.
it is uh, raining, and we uh, thank you all for coming out um, in the interest of keeping us as dry as possible. We're going to have a prayer, and I'll bless our communion elements through that prayer rather than doing the whole litany this morning. Um, we do want to share our joys and concerns with one another, and um, it's really difficult to do that in the parking lot. And it's even more difficult for those worshiping online to be able to share their joys and concerns with us. So I encourage you, if you are worshiping online, you can uh, drop those concerns into the comments or um, you can contact us in the church office and we'll make sure to add those names to our list. You'll see those that are listed in our bulletin and would like to add um, prayers for the family of Don Murphy. He passed away yesterday. That's Pat Owen's uncle. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy Lord, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, we thank you for this time when we gather together with brothers and sisters, both here and around the world. Lord, we thank you that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to set an example of what it means to love and to care for one another, an example of what it means to be humble, what it means to serve. And Lord, we thank you for the ways that our church embodies that heart of service. Thank you especially for our youth and our leaders for all those who are serving you every day. Lord, we lift up to you our prayer concerns and ask you to especially be with those who are grieving. We lift up to you all of those who are sick, and we pray for all of those who continue to work so hard, for those who are on the front line of this pandemic. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit on each of us. Help us, Lord, to remember that we are your guests at the great banquet, but we are also called to be on the other side of, this, of the table, to do all that we can to share your love with everyone, not just to do what we ought to do, but do more. And Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to share in Holy Communion. And we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And may we be the body of Christ, transformed to serve this world. Make us one with you and make us one with each other until you return and we feast together at the heavenly banquet. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took a loaf of bread. He broke the bread, gave thanks to God, passed it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And so as we partake of our bread, let us remember that Christ's body is broken for us, but together we are his body. May this nourish us to serve him. After they had shared in the bread, Jesus took a cup. He blessed it, gave thanks to God, passed it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this. This is the cup of the new covenant. It is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ poured out for each of us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you transform bread and juice to nourish us, to remind us of the sacrifice that you have made for us. Pour out your spirit on us, Lord. May your body and blood transform us so that we may transform the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I invite you to join us as we sing together one bread and one body. gathered together we have feasted at the banquet of god let us go now to the other side of the table to love and serve god as we go above and beyond to love and serve others in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen <laughs> 